Hey guys, today we're taking a sprite that we've made in Photoshop and we're putting a rig on it and we're also painting weight. What's up guys, welcome back to the fourth day of Monk March. Uh, we're doing good, we're doing good. This, this is not coffee, this is cereal coffee, so I'm not cheating, that's very important to say. So you saw the preview, you know what we're doing, let's just jump right into it. To be honest, I really hate doing rigging and skinning and everything art related, but this is actually, this is actually fun. I seem to be the only one that seems to think that it is funny. Oh, you're awake now. You're gonna watch this episode. And if you don't create your own sprite, you can find mine over on the website. Um, this time around is going to include animation as well because I've decided to package today's video and tomorrow's video in the same package. So it will include animation, but if you want to see how to do those animations, to create those animation, we'll check that out tomorrow. Hi. Alright, so the requirement for today is to have Photoshop. It's quite a big requirement, or uh, if you don't have Photoshop, you can have a Photoshop file. Mine is on the website, you can always download it. This is what I'm going to be using. If you have a look over here, there's a, like, a very specific way that you have to create your character for it to work with the Unity PSB importer. And basically, everything is on a different layer. And what it does is that Unity will import it on different layer as well. Um, so that's quite cool. So let's have a look at what we have here. We have a head, body, arm, just very basic stuff. That's going to be the easiest rig you've ever done. Now, um, when you have your Photoshop file like this, if you have made your own character, what you'll need to do here is to save it as a big file. So if we go under Save As, you're going to select the large file or large document file, so PSB. That's the format Unity will use to import this. So it is already in my artwork folder. If we have a look over here, I'm in the wrong scene, but as you can see under artwork, I have my PS file. And if you zoom in even more, you'll, you'll see that it says um, PSB file here at the top. All right, so we got this thing. What do we do next? What do we do if we see the Photoshop like this? Well, we open up our window, package manager, and we find out the tools we need. So for this video, we're going to need a couple of tools. Actually, we're gonna need two. The first one is 2D animation. That's for the rig and also the skinning. And the second one is going to be the PSD importer. Once we have both our packages, now we should see our icon in a different manner. Actually, now it's, uh, it's an actual prefab. If you go down, you'll see that it has all the different element, um, all the different layers we had in Photoshop. So the arms. Now I will drag and drop my prefab and it will look something like this in the game. Uh, of course, not rig, not skin. So we can't really do anything. We can just move it around like it's a normal picture. So what do we do next? Well, we're going to click on it um, inside of the project folder and open up the sprite editor. You can also do that by going under window to the sprite editor. Here you will find the atlas for your character. That's not what we're interested in though. So let's go at the top. Instead of choosing prize sprite editor, we're going to go under skinning editor and then it's going to mash it up nicely, just like in the picture. Now let me run you through some of the workflow that makes this very, very simple. Every time you want to click on, say, a specific pot, you click on it, you double click on it actually, and then it will highlight just like so. If you have multiple parts that you're trying to select a very, very specific spot, like say here, I can double click once, but I didn't want that, so double click again, it will select the body. And if I want to unselect everything, just double click somewhere where there's nothing. All right, so we have our mesh. Let's go ahead and start laying down some bones, just like we do in a normal, uh, well, rig, you could say, in 3D rig. So we're going to start with a simple bone, like the first bone. So the first bone I'll lay down is the one that's going to control everything. If we move that bone, we basically move the whole rig. So I'll start right here from the chest, and I'll go all the way down there. Then we'll drop that. We will right-click to go off this thing, create another bone for the arm, just like this right click again and do the same thing on the left and finally do the same thing on the legs oh, actually that's not finally we need to do the head we need to do the head as well so um i've basically made a bone for everything the head i'll do it this way oh and now it's time to give themselves some parents so what i'll do now is that i'll parent those bones to the actual main one uh, we could have done it by simply having multiple bones, so if you just keep going like that, it's going to create children, just like this bone is parented by the orange one. However, uh, in my case over here, since we have two, you know, 
both of them need to be parented. So here's what we'll do. We'll go under reparent bone and I'll just drag every other bone that isn't the first one and I'll put it as a children of bone one, which means if we go under preview pose, now we have we have some sort of rig. And if we play around with a single bone, say this one, I can move it. It doesn't bother anybody. It still is attached to the one in the middle, but if I move the middle one though, this moves everybody. All right, so one thing I gotta say, I am not the best rigger, I'm not the best skinner, I'm not the best animator. I don't have those skill set within me, I'm just a, a programmer usually, but I'll help you make this work. So there might be an error with this, there might be like no need to have the bone all the way down there. Um, I'll leave that to you guys to do your further research or to leave me a comment in the, in the comment section down below. I actually appreciate it if you did leave me a comment so I can get better. That's a usually that's usually where I get my feedback from. Um, okay, so we have the bones. We can leave that over here. Let's go with the geometry. I'm gonna start by doing a auto geometry. So this is what we're going to end up with. And you know, that's quite cool because it's very, very accurate. Sometimes it's not. So what you do is you edit the, the uh, geometry. You, if you want, you can go ahead and play with the vertices. So I'll actually just put the back background. Uh, so you double click on the head. And if I want to modify something, you know, I can pull these around and uh, have different graphics basically. Um, I don't ever have any problem with the auto geometry. Sometimes, of course, you might want to be able to just tuck this in a little bit further in, uh, but it does work fine if you don't do that as well. So I was always successful with the auto geometry, uh, but just do know that you can, you're able to create some more edge and make this a little bit more precise like so. All right, so having that done, I'm gonna go over to the weight and that's also fun because I'll do it auto weight, see what kind of result we get. And let me just make sure that um, I have nothing selected. So double click over here, generate everything. And let's see what we got. So all the colors you're seeing right now are associated with a bone, which means this arm over here is completely, well, almost completely green, which means if I move the green bone, it will move. Let's give it a try. And it does, but there's also green on the face and there's also green on the body. So we're moving more than just this. If we move this, well, that bone controls everything, so it does move everything. If I go here, as you can see, since we have some yellow in the face, it does it does that kind of result. Now, do know that you, you can also move them around more than just rotating. You can do a couple of things. Um, you know, that's that's quite something. <laughs> uh, you can do a little wave, but of course, it's all messed up in the face. So you're going to have to clean up your mesh, most likely. Uh, I wasn't ever lucky enough to get this perfect on the first try. So let's go ahead and start with the face. I don't like the fact that the face deforms when I move my arm. So I'll go ahead and make sure that uh, there's no influence at all. I don't want to have any influence at all from the arm. So if I'm moving my arm, don't want to be moving my face whatsoever. Don't want to be deforming my face whatsoever. So I'll take the weight brush. I'll select this bone. So this bone is what? Bone number six. Okay. Let's go and add and subtract. I'll just put that up to the max and start painting it on top. Oh, yeah, I have to select it first. So double click and then you paint it on top like so. And then it's completely going to be the color of the bone associated with it. What does it mean? Well, it means that if we go back and under preview pose, and I'm moving my arm this time. Well, you can see I had a little bit left in the year, but nothing else moves actually on this side as well. Okay, that's, I that wasn't what I expected to, to happen, but, um, yeah, let's go back and paint some more. So I left some in here. We were on bone number six. Okay. Another alternative, like I'll leave some in here from the green. What I could do in case like I suspected that my bone was still in here is go under bone influence and see, hey, there's some influence from this bone, this one and this one while I have this head selected. I know that my head is only bone six, so I can go here and remove them simply using the subtract. And now I'm 100% sure that if I move something, it isn't going to affect my head. And we have a nice little wave that affects too much of the body, but hello, nice. Also a good practice that I haven't done here and I will do in a moment is to rename my bone. I should have done that at the beginning, um, but let me just rename those real quick. And it is done. I renamed all my bone. Um, in terms of weight, okay, so maybe I don't want to put as much weight on my body with that arm. In fact, maybe I want to remove it completely. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I like the fact that it curves here with the leg. I'll keep that. I'll keep that as well. I'll just remove some from the body. So the 
the influence the arms have on the body, I'll remove some of that. So what do we do? We double click on the body, go under the weight brush, and well, you know, well, actually, you know what? Since we know the bone name now, we could go under bone influence and remove the arms completely from here. So right arm is gone, left arm is gone. Now it's going to put a lot more weight, um, a lot more influence on the body, on the other bones that were around it. So if I move this one, uh, as you can see, now that it has more power, now that it has more influence, it does do a really weird effect on the body. So we're gonna have to go and paint that out. Um, but you know, the arm doesn't affect it at all. So that's a good thing. So let's go ahead, weight brush, maybe put it on the body bone and reduce my steep and my harness a bit. Just go and tap that in here. You can also play with it while it's uh, while you're modifying it, as you can see. There, it's not that bad like that. Okay, so let's go on the other side now. We're gonna be modifying um, the influence on the left leg. Actually, no, we're gonna be giving influence to the body bone and removing some from the left leg. Oops. Make sure you don't double click too fast else you're going to select the thing beneath it. And you know what? I actually like that already. Not saying that this is a good pose, but it's working for what I want to do. That's perfect. Okay, once you're done, make sure you hit apply. Very important so you don't lose your work. So rigging and skinning uh, in 3D is something I really, really hate doing. However, doing it in 2D is actually quite fun. Um, so I had a lot of fun doing that. And that's actually how you do it. It's as simple as that. Once you're done, once you applied that, you will now have a, uh, well, you'll now have this thing, which is basically your prefab. It has your graphic inside of it, and it also has your bones. So over here, that's my graphics. They're just lying around with the rest of the, uh, well, they're just lying right here on the first level of the prefab. And then inside of that, you'll find another object. In this case, it's called body because that's my main bone. So. That was my bone architecture. Um, and from that point on, you'll find the actual bone themselves. Now, if you want to animate this thing, we'll see, we'll see how to do that tomorrow. But if you want to play around with it and pose around with it right now, you can always move these bones and do a little wave. All right, so that's actually where we're going to end today. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all the patrons that make this happen. Also, if you're watching this and you want to help us financially, you can head over to Patreon and do that. Or you can help us out on YouTube. Why haven't you subscribed yet? I'm looking at my stats and I see 80% of the people who's watching right now, they're not subscribed. That's not cool. We have a video every day. You better subscribe. I think I'm done with my rant. What you think, boy?